The following program is a Creative Magic Network production. Well, hello and good morning to everybody out there. This is Max Ivy again, and uh, you're listening to What's Your Excuse? I'm here again with my friend and co-host, Frederick Bay. Uh, for those who don't know me, I am the blind blogger, also a self-published author of two books, Leading You Out of the Darkness Into the Light, A Blind Man's Inspirational Guide to Success. And it's not the cookie, it's the bag, an easy-to-follow guide to weight loss success, and an online media specialist. And uh, today, uh, in addition to getting to hang out with my friend, uh, Frederick, I have a uh, uh, another great guest for you, and I'll let Frederick introduce him. Yeah, uh, hello everybody, this is Frederick By. I am so glad to be here today. And you know, people, I have a, I have a question for you. What's more? What's the one thing when you run an internet business? When you run when you run an online business? What do you want, right? Well, you want SEO. You want somebody who can guide you. Uh, you know, through optimize your, your, your hits to your website. And today we have a very fascinating guest. His name is Ashley Folks. He's a web WordPress and SEO specialist. And you can find him at madlemmings.com. And that's the kind of conversation we're going to have today. We're going to have a conversation of, um, you know, business and how he got to be where he is because this is what this show is all about it's about the story so hello ashley how are you today great frederick thanks for having me max i appreciate you guys taking the time (laughs) awesome awesome thank you very much take it away max yeah well yeah well i i've i'm happy to have you on my show and uh ashley um for those who don't know this uh me and ashley have been good friends for about five years now we met through blog commenting on that on adrian smith's blog and actually helped me to turn a uh, horribly designed website into something that's pretty professional looking even though he had to, to to live with some limitations i put on him and i just realized today that i've never given you a linkedin recommendation for that so i'm gonna have to go do that as soon as we're through talking uh, this is actually an anniversary of ours. Actually, you uh, helped me move my site over to WordPress this week. All right, really? Okay, cool. What what what, what platform? I wasn't sure on, if Max? you would remember that far back. Yeah, yeah. sure, of course I did. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what platform were you on, Max? <laughs> I'm surprised. I was hand coding HTML. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, it was yeah. a it was a kind of a partial move. I mean, Max had a lot of sort of legacy stuff which needed to be moved and was was quite painful to do um yeah so I, sort of, <laughs> <laughs> I, I it was a bit faster and easier for me to do it obviously and uh yeah i'm pretty good with the keyboard as well so yeah i kind of made quick quick work of something which would have taken him months to do so i had no problem helping him do that yeah, yeah, it was, and and, so, and and Ashley was also the first person to have me on a podcast that I didn't. Um, the, the for, I, my first podcast interview was with you uh, as well, which uh, strange how life works that way. Now, I, uh, when I asked you to come on here, um, I wanted you know you're you're now specializing specializing in WordPress de- uh, development and search engine optimization. I was hoping that at least in the beginning you could tell people a little bit about how you came to blogging. Um, if I remember right, you had a uh, you had an accident where you spent about a year, pretty much uh, immobile, and blogging was a was a beginning of your of your changing from and recovering from that. Yeah, it was an interesting period. Actually, it was kind of a bit of a coincidence, but I was already thinking of changing what I was doing when I had my accident. So the accident kind of pushed me over the edge to really change my life and. Uh, yeah, I was I was doing a sort of a startup. I was creating a, an online application at the time. I was a software designer, and yeah, while I was doing that, it was ski season. I live here in Switzerland, where there's a lot of snow and mountains. And uh, I was out skiing with a buddy of mine. We were taking a day off work, and just coming down the mountain, it was nothing spectacular, but the results were spectacular. Um, I basically twisted 
my leg with a ski, which is kind of like putting a massive corkscrew in your leg and twisting till it shatters, basically. And, yeah, so my lower leg exploded, more, although I didn't know it at the time. Um, it took a long time until they actually really told me what the what the story was. I was lying there in hospital in, in a lot of pain and I, unable to move for about four days until they could do the operation. So, yeah, it was a rather major operation. It was about eight or nine hours. And the surgeon, lucky for me, was very good at what he did and he reassembled the whole thing like a very complicated jigsaw puzzle through a <laughs> slit in my leg. And, uh, yeah, it's basically, I would say, as of now, it's almost four years, and now I'm kind of at about 90%. So I'm pretty lucky to be mostly back to normal and uh, also to have had a change of life as a result. So, yeah, I was basically home um, on crutches for a long time, and it took me about six months till I could even walk like I had to relearn how to walk because <laughs> you just lose all your muscles and and the ability to actually coordinate which is really weird it's like being a baby again and yeah you know, I was kind of at home for a long time and finishing up a job I'd been working on um, I was had a couple more months at this job but I didn't really want to be there so I had to sort of commute in there every now and again but I really hated what I was doing before and as well as being unable really to do anything else so I decided to start to learn marketing because um, I knew the product that I'd created wouldn't sell itself or, or I finally discovered that, that it doesn't sell itself. <laughs> and so I decided that the only way really to learn online marketing was to do it rather than keep reading about it all the time actually to do the stuff. So I thought, well, I need to start a blog. So I started a blog and I came up with a really random name, Mad Lemmings, rather than using my name or the word blog or anything else and yeah i basically started blogging and joining groups and and learning social media and wordpress and all of that stuff i mean obviously i was already good on the web because i've been doing that for 12 or 13 years um but yeah i had to learn the whole marketing thing which was a huge thing to swallow as well as being home with my leg in the air and and I'm unable to move around really so yeah, it was a massive change in my life and has continued to be basically since then because as you guys probably know, if you work for yourself and go from a corporate life or a, a job to not having a job, um, the change is more than just where your income comes from. It's it's a massive mental shift and, yeah, a complete sort of wake-up call to me to change my life, change the way I live, change the way I feel about what I do. Uh, who I work with, why I do what I do. Yeah, so the whole thing really changed for me, which so, is which has been amazing. My life is completely different now. So basically you started to ask yourself the real questions, like what's my purpose and <laughs> and uh, what do I really, really want? Is, am I right? Yeah, I mean, before that I was kind of just doing what you do. You know, you, you finish school, you finish college you go and get a job but i didn't like what i'd studied so i'd already changed a lot from what i studied so i was already on the road to being different but um i was still kind of pursuing career as my happiness and then money and promotion as my happiness and then eventually realizing that actually it's not that that makes you happy it took me sort of a good 10 years to realize that um and yet yeah, lying there sort of semi-disabled for a long time made me realize that that was really the most important thing, what, what it is you're doing, why you're doing it, who you're helping, um, rather than pursuing money or yeah. status or career or, or anything else. Amen. You mentioned um, also uh, that you you said, you know, going for corporate life to, you know, doing working for yourself is a mind, it's a mind shift. What do you mean by mind shift and what, you know, what was that shift for you? What's the difference? Well, I'd say it's it's fundamentally different in most ways. I mean, not only do you now have to look after yourself, uh, you have to take care of the A to Z of everything you do, so from bookkeeping to starting a business if you decide to, to start a, an LLC or whatever you want to call it, your own sort of registered business, um, find clients, find ways to make money. I mean, it may not be clients. You can also be doing affiliate marketing or, or what have you, but you need to find an income stream and, and you need to take care of marketing, caring for customers, emails, customer support. So the whole sort of A to Z, whereas when you're working for somebody, 
you have tasks, but they're kind of usually in most jobs, they're just handed to you. And once you finish them, that's it. You kind of can go home. But when you have your own business, there is no end of the day. There is no going home. There is no, yeah, you have to do everything. And on top of that, you have to sort of learn to juggle all those tasks and stay motivated because there's huge ups and downs. I mean, in corporate life, there is too, but you can kind of get away from them. Whereas when you're running a business, if things aren't going well, there's no escaping it unless you go back to work, which most of us can't anymore so yeah i'd say it affects everything from home life to work life to everything you do okay so so now you've uh, you've you've started a blog and you were doing uh website design and now you're uh you're into wordpress development and search engine optimization and uh, this comes back to the marketing side of it which is the one thing that that just about everybody has trouble with. They either don't know how, or don't uh, don't think they need to, or don't have the time, or some or some combination of those. Uh, what is what is what are some of your top strategies for getting the traffic to the website, to getting people's attention, and then converting that into uh, into clients and income? I'd say there's a few ways these days that I really focus on. Um, I'm actually doing a little bit of a shift as we speak, which I'll I'll get to at the end. But I would say the one thing that has kind of led me to the most traffic uh, and recognition these days is writing really detailed, helpful, lengthy blog posts that are that are well researched, and also I know I can get search engine traffic for of course behind all of that is a lot of know-how which you need to learn but rather than just praying and hoping and writing something randomly and hoping someone's going to read it or that google's going to give you some traffic there is a strategy to doing that to doing your research before you do anything which i always recommend people do they do some keyword research and figure out whether what they're doing even makes any sense for their audience and whether there is even an audience for what you're about to write because you could be writing on a topic no one's searching for or you could be using the wrong words. You could could just be using the wrong phrases, the wrong synonyms. So, yeah, I basically typically these days only write every few months and when I do I write something really big and targeted. Um, I did a post in, in May, for example, which I can't remember if you were on or not, um, Max, but it was basically a a hundred different ideas to start an online business. And it was, I can't remember how many thousands of words, whether it was 15,000 or 6,000. It was huge anyway. And it took me three or four months to write this piece. And it's now got 17,000 social media shares. It's getting me tons of traffic. I got tons of experts on there and I created an infographic, which is my second strategy. Um, If you've got a big piece, you can often create a summary in a very simple visual using something like Canva. Um, if people aren't aware of that, it's a really easy to use graphics tool. And I create that and put that on Pinterest. And sometimes if you've got the right topic that nobody else has touched yet, which again comes down to research, then that pin has gone really crazy on Pinterest. It's gone like 14,000 times on Pinterest or something, and it's going exponentially at the moment. So yeah, I basically try and target topics and audiences that lead to traffic in my business because I know that I need I, I need people who are starting businesses or have started businesses or are still in the initial stages of their businesses who need me to provide either courses or services to help them with traffic because um, that's predominantly what I'm trying to do these days. So that's, that's the other aspect of it. You need to understand who you're going after as well, because you can write a topic that gets you tons of traffic, but it could be completely the wrong audience. So that's another big thing to really to really think about. All right, once again, we're here with right. Ashley Falk. He's a WordPress and SEO specialist, and you can you can reach him. You can find him at madlemmings.com. That's M A D L E double M, like mama, I N like nose, G S dot com. And by the way, guys, right before continuing this conversation, on top of getting fascinating interviews, such as this one straight to your inbox, if you have a passion, you know, something that fuels your curiosity, when you subscribe to our free Creative Magic community, you will get super cool exclusive gifts in return, such as the ebook, 
Happiness Quotes by the Ambassador of Happiness herself, Maura Sweeney, and also an exclusive conversation with two of my favorite people, Alex Okoroji and the blind blogger, yours truly, Max Ivy, as we talked the influence of friends and college education on our lives, the competitiveness in a crowded field, the importance of business and financial education in arts and entrepreneurship, and more. And also, Alex has a special gift for you inside. Yes, a book. A book that you have to pay normally in Amazon, but because you're part of the Creative Magic community, you get it for free. I promise you will get inspired and entertained. Subscribe for free at frederickby.com. Frederick with a C. I like bye-bye.com. Take it away, Max. Okay, so you said two things in there that are really important, and they're probably things that everybody, that people have heard before, but sometimes it's those lessons that we need to, to continually relearn. So first, you, you said you have to know who your ideal customer or, or, or market is, and second, you have to find out what it is that they want. So besides doing keyword research and using the, the tools that are available, either software or online, uh, what are some of the other ways you find out what it is that your audience wants? Because it sounds like you've done a really good job of defining who they are. Yeah, that's it's nice that you say so because actually it's an ongoing process. I'm constantly rethinking and, and relearning that. And, and one thing that I've been doing lately because I've just launched a course and I wasn't 100% sure that it hit the mark, so I did some surveying of my audience, which is something else you can do if you have an existing audience, then you can try and figure out what it is that they want if you haven't got the right product or you're not getting any traction. So, of course, an existing audience is very helpful um, or at least a few existing customers. You can try and interview them individually, which is something I want to do when the first version of my course finishes in a few weeks. I want to have a chat to the course members and see exactly how the course went for them and how they felt about it and what things they thought were good and bad because there's nothing like direct feedback from people, especially people who are already giving you money, to try to figure out what it is that's working and not working for your business because this stuff is the hardest thing. I would say figuring out your audience, figuring out what's working and trying to find out exactly what it is that these people want without constantly guessing, which is what most of us do and is wrong, but it's just, it's hard not to do it. You really have to look for ways of getting feedback. So if you don't have an audience or you don't have any customers, which is often what happens when you're starting out, what you could do is maybe start collecting email addresses uh, in exchange for maybe a free ebook or something, which can also be something small. It doesn't have to be a novel. And you can start talking to these people in exchange for the something you give them, or you can give them a free consult if you're specifically good at something, a service, just to pick their brain, get a little bit of information about their needs, their requirements, their problems, because their problems are the things they're going to pay money to solve. So, and again, if you can't do that, you could go to forums, um, online forums, or places like Cora. Um, or Reddit to try and find things that people are talking about in your industry and see the kinds of problems they're having. That's basically the suggestions I, I would give you at the moment. Yeah, you know, one of the things that I have struggled with is as I've been uh, doing other things besides the Midway Marketplace has been there's, there seems to be a block in my brain in applying things that I learned in the, on the Midway to the blind blogger and one of the best examples of that is the email list because you know i grew the email list on the midway marketplace by giving people a free text link which took me a couple of minutes for each person and gave me you know uh access to their inbox and got them to start opening emails when before they weren't listening to me at all so uh, for some reason i think in my mind that the you know if you're going to give a gift to get people on the email list that it has to be something big and and i'm finally learning that one that it really doesn't have to be anything all that uh impressive or that takes a lot of your of your time it just has to be something to, to show that you're that you're really interested in them and give them a little something for letting you send them those couple of emails yeah i mean one of the things that a lot of the Big marketers are saying at the moment, at least the ones I see getting results and that I listen to, is 
is similar to what you're saying with a slight twist on it, which is that the thing that you give them, if if they can put it into action really quickly and see a result, then they'll be really impressed. So because often the problem is when you give someone a big book and they download it, they don't open it and read it. So if you're going to go down that path or even the short checklist kind of helping someone quickly path, you have to usually follow it up, which is something I'm trying more of at the moment because often people will forget they've downloaded it, they'll move on with their day, they won't take action and therefore they won't remember you or appreciate you as much as they may have if they had have used your tips and, and gotten some results. So that's sort of a the next step beyond that I would suggest. Okay, so... Once you start to get uh, connect with people and have email lists and have a way of communicating with some people to to, to continually re- refine who it is you are and what your what problem you're offering to solve for the for this group, uh, shorter, easier to apply, quicker uh, things that they can do right this minute or before the end of their day is the kinds of things that will get their respect and keep them coming back to your emails. Yeah, I think so. I mean, if you if you want to go out and create a huge professional ebook, I've seen that work as well. But to be honest, the effort versus the the result, the return on investment, I just don't think it's worth it. I've seen some companies do it and they do a great job of it. But firstly, they have resources most of us don't have, and secondly, I think a lot of people don't end up reading them. I mean, I've got a hard drive full of these things which I've never read. So to me, I see the benefit of the really small thing being delivered that I can apply today because I think honestly most people appreciate that more. Well, I can I can tend to back up what you're saying because I did not create my first book to be a giveaway, but for a couple of months I did give it away and nobody worked past the third or fourth step. So uh, I tend to agree with you that the giving away ebook is a bad is bad for return on investment unless you have nothing else you can think of to offer in exchange for the email or unless, you know, if it's, if it's product you've already created, then that might be a different uh, story as far as return on investment. But for the most part, I would tend to agree with you and the other experts that you follow. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I do enjoy let me, let me reading this, your book. Bo- let, let me ask you this, Ashley. I have a question. Uh, a lot of people, when they're starting out, they're afraid of the competi- competition. Uh, uh, competition. I mean, <laughs> sorry for the accent. Competition. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, in a bit, it, it's so crowded out there on, on the internet right now. How do you, you know, get over that and and build an audience? You know what I mean? When you're, especially when you're starting out, everything just seems so big and you know crowded. What would you tell them? Well, there's a couple of ways I would suggest, and I'm even trying some of them myself. I was talking about this in an earlier answer but didn't get to it. One of the things that I'm trying, which I've seen a guy do recently, which which blew my mind, there's a guy out there, you can go and check him out. His name is um, Sam Hurley, and I think he's. you can go and check his Twitter handle because he actually doesn't have a live website. He has a landing page, but he doesn't have a website, which is... You're gonna you're gonna really just be blown away when you when you hear what he's what this guy has done. He's he's the head of uh, marketing for a a small marketing company in in England, and he's got something like a hundred and fifty thousand Twitter followers, and he did it in a year, and he did it just by interacting with people, especially higher level people, and going after specific people not in a very sort of spammy or stalking kind of way, but just he said, okay, if I go after sort of this person, this person, and this person who would be of benefit to him because they're in his industry or have lots of connections. So he just started interacting with them, getting to know them, sharing their stuff. And he did this. He spent a lot of time doing this, and he's just exploded out of the gate. He's now known as one of the top digital marketers in the world, and yet he has no blog. He was nobody a year ago. So this is the whole influencer marketing, connecting with top-level people in your industry. And I did this back when I started out, actually accidentally. And I got on the radar of some quite big bloggers just by mentioning them a few times in a blog post I wrote. Now, these days, it's getting harder for that to have as much effect as it used to have. But I think just 
bit by bit getting to know people who are either a bit above you or a lot above you. And depending on how far above you they are in followers and audience and how busy they are, it can take more effort to get on their radar. So you have to keep that in mind. But it takes persistence. It might take a few months. But having a network of people who can support you and can share your content and help you out and maybe even give you referrals or work um, is huge. And I think that, like anything in the world, having friends, having family, it's just the next version of that, but the business version of that. Um, I would suggest doing that actually is one of the things I wish I'd done more of. What would you, what would you tell? Because a lot of people out there are creative people and, you know, they enjoy doing what they do. Well, like a guy like me, okay, what would you tell the, the guy like me who, who loves to do what he does, podcasting and writing and all that stuff, but when it comes to marketing, it's a pain in the butt. You know, it's something that you just don't necessarily love to do. You have to do, you know, because you're running, quote, unquote, a business. And all of a sudden, my lazy self kind of kind of emerges uh, out of my guts when I, you know, when I think of Twitter and marketing, each every, you know, and Facebook and all of that. What would you tell me? And what, I mean, what would you tell somebody like me, you know, who who's just, I don't know, just... It's not my passion. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, it's, I think, honestly, you have to try to find the avenue that is the easiest for you. So, of course, forcing yourself to do something you hate is very difficult. Um, doing nothing is obviously a big problem, so you need to do something. But which of the worst evils you pick is kind of up to you. So I would say... For example, if you like podcasting, then sort of getting to know other podcasters would be beneficial. Maybe if you can get to a local meetup, get to a conference. If you really don't like meeting people in person, um, finding groups on Facebook, maybe t uh, maybe LinkedIn, but LinkedIn's very business oriented. I wouldn't think that would help you so much. Um, Facebook is probably better, or there's also Twitter chats um, if you're on Twitter although they can be very fast-paced and often hard to keep up with, but you can give them a go. There's lists of, of Twitter chats around. Um, or if you like writing, then obviously if you like writing and don't like interacting with people, then blogging is better. But again, it's very hard to get any traction without either having an audience on social media or getting Google traffic, which requires you, generally speaking, to get links. And to get links, you usually need relationships. So It's very hard to get anywhere without any relationships, and I'm also really bad at that. Um, I'll work solidly all day long without almost any interaction with anybody, and I suffer, I suffer from it as a result. It, it causes problems in my business, and it causes problems in expanding my, my reach and everything, and it's something you really have to kind of get a habit of doing. You just need to find the best way to do it for, that works for you, I would say. Right. You know, I've got a. I'm, I know. I know we're we're doing this to interview uh, Ash, Ashley, but I I have a suggestion for you, Frederick, that just occurred to me. You know, you're in a perf a perfect position. You have done over a year, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> of of interviews with people on your two different podcasts. You've been participating in Frankie Picasso's podcast. You've been participating in my my podcast. You've got a whole bunch of past guests on your website that, that you've spent at least an hour or more with, that you've exchanged emails with. You've already got relationships. You just need to, to, to pop in and say, uh, hey, I enjoyed having you on the show last year, uh, and and think of something that you can talk about. You know, it, you've got dozens, if not hundreds, of opportunities of people you've already built relationships with. You just don't think of it that way. Right. And that's really the problem for a lot of entrepreneurs is how – is making that thought shift that Ashley was talking about earlier. But you have lots of entry or entree or however you say that word. You've got you've got doors already open to you. You just have to decide to go knock on them again. Right, right. Yeah, right. the hardest thing is making it a habit, actually. That's what I need to do as well as creating a system where maybe you have a – make a list with their email, their Twitter handle, whatever way that's easiest to reach them, and just periodically – You just shoot them a two or three line email or tweet or whatever with something that's maybe interesting to them. So don't just write, hey, how are you doing? Um, wondering if you could help me or whatever. Just always give. If you always give, they'll remember you. And then just look quickly look for an article 
on a blog you think would be interesting to them and, and then quickly scan through it and say, oh, I was just reading this, thought, thought this might interest you. I do that with my customers as well a couple of times a year just to get back on their radar and they don't see it as as transparent as I feel like it is. But, um, yeah, just sort of touching base with people can really put them back in their mind and maybe you can even have a PS at the bottom of all your emails if you're looking for a particular opportunity at the time something like that. But, yeah, it's it's keeping the relationships going that's difficult and remembering to do it is difficult. Um, right. Creating a, a process, I think, is the best thing. Even I need to do that better. It's, it's very hard to get as a daily habit, actually. All right, once again, we're here with Ashley Fox. He's a WordPress and SEO specialist, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, what's more important than search engine optimizer? Um, you can find him at madlemmings.com. And by the way, guys, right before continuing this conversation, one, one little quick tidbit. You know, are you an Amazon shopper? When you use our Amazon links at frederickbuy.com, Amazon kicks back a few bucks to the show and it helps cover production costs at no additional cost to you. No hidden fees, no nothing, no BS. So if you like what you hear, you can help by going over to frederickbuy.com. That's frederick with a C, buy like bye bye.com. Click on the blog page and click the Amazon links in the sidebar for all your online shopping. It is really that simple and bookmark it to find it easier. Take it away, Max. <laughs> you know, the first couple of weeks we did, did this, we did, uh, Frederick didn't do announcements. And so now when he does them, it throws me off a little But um <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I think what we were just talking about there is important is it, is it that, uh, as an entrepreneur, you have all these jobs that you have to do, as you were mentioning earlier, and we have to figure out a way, a systematic way to make sure that we cover the, <clears throat> the important things, which is usually the creation of the content or the product or the service and then the marketing or promotion of it. And so it is good. We're having you on here, Ashley. Um, now I noticed I noticed something today when I was visiting your website. You have uh, Google embedded in your site, and people can can follow your Google bef- without even clicking on your blog. And I think I read something on your LinkedIn page about how you're new, now you're really emphasizing Google. Do I have that correctly? And is there a particular reason why, why you're emphasizing Google over LinkedIn or Twitter at this point? Well, actually, I mean you're probably talking about the bottom of the page. I have uh, two. Google links, Google Plus links. Is that is that what you mean? I think so. But like I said, it just seemed to me that that seems to be your – Is do you have a social media network that you prefer over the others or that you spend more of your time using? Um, well, the Google Plus links are only there because um, one of them is a link to my Google Plus page, which has a link to Google Maps, which then tells Google that – my website is that business and is good for local search to have a, um, a Google Plus page. But if it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't care so much about Google Plus. I never go on there. Um, these days, I spend most of my time on Instagram um, or Twitter following this Sam Hurley technique I was talking about. Yeah, and, um, you know, Instagram seems so popular right now. And I, for me, you know, for me personally, the more – hits i got is really from instagram but t- tell me why what why, tell us why is instagram so good right now so it seems that everybody's talking about it it seems that the the, the new kind of social media must have you know yeah it's just become popular i'd say in the last year and yeah there's probably a few reasons for it i mean one is that facebook for the average person not paying anything is really difficult because it's very hard to get your page likers or your followers, if you want to call them that, the people who've liked your page. It used to be you could share a post and they would see it. Now I think it's something like 3 or 5%. So unless you're paying to push a post or boost a post, as they call it, most people are kind of in trouble on Facebook. And so, they, you know, you may have built up a huge audience, but no one's seeing anything. So Facebook's a bit dead um, Google Plus, yeah, most people never really got into it. Twitter is great for connecting with people, as I said, if you're trying to get on the radar of influencers and stuff. But for sharing content and getting traffic, I would never recommend it. Um, 
why I would actually does, recommend. Why would you not recommend Twitter? It's too it's too fleeting. You know, you tweet something yeah. and minutes later it's gone. And um, really, if you really, don't, get... I, I I really wonder who really sits down under you know which person who doesn't have a business who doesn't have you know is just a consumer who really sits down and read all these tweets. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't. Th- I don't think most people do. <laughs> Yeah. So Instagram has become kind of more popular because people kind of figured out a way to make it more business oriented without kind of ruining it. Um, whereas if you look at Twitter, you know, it's full of business stuff or buy my product stuff or blog posts. And, and yeah, all the other channels are similar. Whereas Instagram, even though I'm doing a business account on there as well as a private one, um, I'm sharing stuff which is predominantly motivational because if I don't do that, no one's going to listen. Most people are not on there looking for business stuff. So if you go business direction, you're going to get a very small return on investment. You have to put out what's interesting to people. However, they will still look at your biography, which is where you can put your link, and occasionally you can still share something business-oriented. So there's a huge audience on there. They all love it. They're all on there all the time. It's not yet as bad as Facebook, although I think it's going to happen, um, that they're going to shut down the the reach of accounts. They're already starting to do it. And, yeah, it's just it's, it's a new place you can get access to people um, and build audiences in almost any any kind of business, which I would say Pinterest is the only other place worth considering, but a lot of businesses have trouble um, on Pinterest because of the audience. So, yeah, I mean, Instagram is just the next. I mean, Snapchat's the next latest one, but it's really hard to build an audience on on Snapchat. That's the problem. So would you would you say that, you know, if you look at the way all the different social media networks have gone, because I have – been on Facebook when you still had a hundred percent or at least a large percentage of your, of your followers seeing your post to like you says down to five. Now it seems like all of the social media networks are so driven by the, by the profit angle that eventually you have to pay in order for people to see your work. Uh, so would you, would you agree with most that the, that the best thing to do as a, long-term strategy is to push as many people as possible to an email list where you know for sure uh, the people on the list are going to get what you have to say? Yeah, and the the other option actually at the moment, I mean, it's all about bringing people back to your website and then hopefully getting them on your email list. Of course, I mean, there's only a certain percentage that are going to sign up from any given page or freebie or whatever it is you're offering but another option that's just started recently you guys have probably noticed and i'd be interested to know how it affects you actually max it must be really annoying is that there's this um little pop-ups that are appearing on the browser itself um i think what's it called push notifications so you basically get a an actual little mini pop-up that's coming from the browser not from the website and it's asking whether you want to be notified next time something new comes up on the website. And a lot of people, are, a lot of the big marketers are starting to push this now. Yeah. And the opt-in rate, so the number of people in percent who sign up for that and actually act on the push on the notification is far bigger than email at the moment. I think it's like really? triple or more. So wow. it's worth it's worth considering. Although the thing is with that, it's harder to sell to those people. Um, you can't send them a sequence of emails. You can't communicate with them as much. You can send them little mini push notifications. Um, but that's another one worth considering. It's similar in that you have sort of direct access to people. So, but yeah, definitely getting people off external properties like social media, um, even places like Medium or Tumblr or uh, what's some of the other ones? Scoop it. I mean, all of these places are great, but the problem is they're not yours and they can change the rules whenever they feel like it. So if you are running your business, basically hoping and praying that this particular place, Facebook or wherever is always going to give you what they're giving you today, then it's actually, unfortunately, a little bit foolish because they want money. That's They're in business as well. So they're going to do everything they can to make money in the long term. 
So, yeah, that means uh, basically screwing down the thumb screws so that we pay them. And uh, that's what Facebook's doing. Twitter's looking at it now. Instagram's part of Facebook, so they're probably going to do it. So, yeah, bringing them back to your website and, and putting them on an email list or a push notification is really the way to go, or at least having people know who you are and visiting your website um, directly. So creating a an audience that likes you is is one of the keys to, to success. Right. Right. Well, the one thing the one the one thing I tell people whenever they ask me the question about should I be on WordPress.org or .com, which for people who don't have a site is, you know, should I go with a self-hosted site or a free site that's hosted by WordPress? My answer is always don't build your business on rented property unless you absolutely have to. So I always tell those people at least claim your domain name and use a redirect if you're going to go with a free free website because at least then you always own your name. So I couldn't agree more with what you're talking about here as far as pushing them back to your website and your email list because those are things that are at least your name, if nothing else. Um, I haven't run into any problems with push notifications so far, but if it operates similarly to how it does on my phone, it won't be too big of a problem for me as a as a blind computer user although I am running a, a version of Safari that's several years out of date right this minute. So mm -hmm. I may be just, I'm, I may not be getting those push notification things in the browser. So I may not be aggravated by them, but it's something I'll ask my friends about and see if it's becoming an issue because generally the way this works is the website designers and the people who are all about getting the, getting the traffic will come up with stuff that works, but aggravates the heck out of people using a screen reader. Uh, <laughs> I hate hover cards with a passion. I don't like them things. If I ever meet whoever came up with the first one, I'm going to hurt him. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. I don't, <laughs> I don't I like, when... I, yeah, Sorry. you remember when we were, yeah, you remember when we were trying to figure out a way for me to handle um, uh, select boxes and um, what is the thing? Thing that the that most WordPress sites use is not a select box. What is it? It's a a tab bar or whatever. And we had yeah, we a, had a, heck a whole of bunch of problems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. as I said, you as designers just don't think about people with uh, yeah readability. Read, what do you what do you call that? Accessibility issues and stuff. Accessibility. It's the last, yeah. The last thing that people think about. It's really it's unfortunate. Yes, it is unfortunate, but but. At least in the UK and Europe, they have laws on the books that so, that are supposed to make them think about it. Um, here in the U.S., the only time they think about it is when somebody takes them to court, which yeah. you know doesn't doesn't happen often because it's a very expensive process. But uh, yeah, I don't. I, uh, generally, the new stuff is is a pain in the butt. Um, but. You know, I'm I'm one of these people. I'm just happy if they all remember to put alt tags. And I'm actually worried that the new Facebook image interpretation algorithm is going to make webmasters think that they no longer have to describe their images for the blind users. Well, I push that as an SEO. That's an SEO thing, actually. People should always try and fill in the alt tag on their images. So, uh, yeah, it's it's something most people forget, and uh, it's actually quite useful. You can get images ranked, and it can help your your content to get ranked as well. So, yeah, I, I constantly mention it, Max, <laughs> for, for SEO purposes. Well, so, yeah, but it's, uh, well it's, I appreciate it because that's the thing about this world. If you can give people a financial motive to do something, <clears throat> they will do it 10 times faster than if you give them a legal or a punishment reason for not doing it. And yes, a perfect, a perf, you know, a perfect example of that is accessibility on on Apple products. Apple didn't do it because they had altruistic motives. Apple did that because they realized that the market was growing older, and that as the market gets older, they are going to need things like uh, speech, like uh, screen magnification, like being able to use adaptive uh, physical technology for people in wheelchairs and people with crutches. And also, I think they they realized that as uh, more and more places push hands free use in cars, that being able to to do everything and have uh, and have speech output would give them an, a leg up in that arena as well. So, 
Yeah, it's all about giving people a financial financial motive. So thanks for pointing that out to me. From now on, <laughs> instead of from now on, instead of telling people that if if they don't do it, the blind people can't see their website. I'm gonna tell them, you know, if you don't do this, you're missing an opportunity to generate traffic and make money. Exactly. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> all right. It's time to so wrap I'll this up. From now on. It's time to wrap this up. Um, Ashley, where can we uh, find you, uh, and uh, what's next for you? Um, yeah, I mean, basically, madlemmings.com is the best place, or on Twitter. Um, I'm also uh, Mad Lemmings, but with a Z on the end, not with an S, because somebody already had the one with the S. So that's uh, M-A-D-L-E-M-M-I-N-G-Z, or Z, as you guys say. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm basically pushing SEO these days. So if anyone wants any help with SEO or wants to learn how to do SEO, um, that's something I'm focusing on a lot is teaching people. I have a bunch of different courses coming out for people, helping them do that. And, yeah, because a lot of business owners can't afford to pay someone to do this stuff. So that's really my focus these days is to help people out with getting more traffic because we all need traffic. Otherwise, we won't make any money. Right, right, and uh, it's always fun to make a little bit of money when you're running a business, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, keeps us all going. <laughs> well, all right. Ashley, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for coming on with us. Ashley, it's been a it's been a real pleasure, and uh, hopefully, it won't be four years before the next time I talk to you again. Um, and you really have helped me my website and my business so much uh by what you did even if if it didn't seem like much of a job to you well no problems it was a pleasure i'm, I'm glad it helped it's always good to have positive feedback well have a good day guys and uh yeah i'll see you on the internet absolutely well, thank you you have a great day all right bye all right bye bye all right max hello yeah i'm here Yeah. Um, talk to me. How, 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 what'd you think? What'd you think? What'd you learn? Well, I learned that even somebody who, uh, is a specialist in the area of getting traffic to his, to other people's websites still has trouble, uh, doing it for his own business or making it a systematic daily, uh, routine approach where he does it every day. And, That's actually encouraging to me because I, one of the questions that's hardest for me that I get asked during interviews is, what is your day like? You know, what is your schedule or your routine? And I have to tell them, you know, I don't really have a schedule or a routine. So if, if Ashley can do what he does and, and admit that he needs to be more systematic about it, then it, it, it gives me hope that, that, you know, maybe tomorrow or next week I will figure out a way to, to get a more, uh, systematic uh approach to my day where i do this first thing in the morning and then then this and then this and by the end of the day i've i've checked off a set list of boxes every day and i think that would would be a good thing for me i uh, it won't be easy but i think it would be a good thing for me and uh so like i say the fact that he struggles with it Uh, is encouraging to me. What did you take out of it? <laughs> yeah. If I guess you struggle with it too. Yeah. It's encouraging. <laughs> um, you know, I learned he's the second guy who talks to me about Pinterest. And, uh, the other one was the other, the, the one we interviewed, Michael Schwartz. Um, you know, you spoke about in, uh, Pinterest. And I think it's really something I'm, a, I'm gonna have to, uh, explore because, um, I don't know. It seems to, you know, it's, it really seems to drive traffic and everything. So, That's definitely something I'm going to explore. Uh, notifications. I was surprised that he uses, that he uses this, um, and that he likes it. I might explore that also. Uh, you know, for me, like I said in during the interview, marketing, and I know you know, Max, it's not, like, it's not the funnest thing to do, you know, and relationships. Yes, it's, it, it's important and it's all about relationships, really, you know, when it comes to, uh, business. Um, whether to your clients or to your colleagues. Um, so that's definitely something I'm gonna have to work on. I think I like the idea you gave me. You know, I interviewed a lot of people. So that way, uh, you know, I created a lot of relationships. I mean, some, some of those people contact me. You know, they say, Hey, I have this new guest for you. What do you think? Or, you know, some of them do it. So it's something I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to do. Absolutely. Um, and see how I'm going to, um, um, implement that you know, in, in my business, but, uh, 
Yeah, uh, I always like to talk to these people. I'm curious what uh, about what his course is, um, you know, and I know he's helped you a lot, so that's very reassuring, and uh, he seems like a good guy. I really liked him, actually. Yeah, I really like him, too, and he is, he is one of the good guys, and I was thinking about something else that, uh, as far as your thing where you've built up these relationships. A lot of the people that you have had on your show – Um, you got to know quite a bit about them. So you should have a, a much easier time thinking of something to say or something to share with them. The other thing that comes to my mind is I would like to, I would like you to go back through, say like the last couple of months of shows you've done, not right this minute, but just something you can do, you know, off air. Think, make a list of the guests you've had in the last couple, three months, and then see how many of those guests have their own shows because i know you don't like marketing but you like talking you yeah. enjoyed doing these interviews with me and whoever we happen to have on with us so i'm thinking that maybe reaching out to some of these people who've been on your show who have shows of their own where you can go on and just have a conversation and take advantage of their audience might be a good way for you to get past your block as far as marketing goes absolutely go with yeah, your strength right. you know strength your Your strength is talking and writing. Well, you get in front of a lot more people talking than writing. So mm -hmm. just I'd be curious to see how many guests you've had in the last few months who have shows. I know that I noted that down. I just wrote it down. I'm going to do this. That's absolutely you know, even more than two months. I'm going to go, you know, but, but, you know, I, I, I spoke to a lot of people and yeah, you know, absolutely. I'm going to do this. You, you're absolutely right. right well, that's. <laughs> And, and I and I just mentioned that because as a you know I know we have to close here, but a lot of times when you're running a business, you get so focused on what you're doing today or what the latest emergency is or, or the the next big project out in front of you that you forget about some of these things that you've that you've done or you could do. You just don't think about them until somebody else comes along and goes, "Hey, have you thought about?" It? And that's that's why you have to build these relationships. That's why you have to have friends online and in person while you're running this business because you have to have those people in your life who will go, Hey, have you thought about, and you know, I like to say the best thing you can have is a friend who will give you a good double dog dare. Yeah. <laughs> That's led yeah. to a couple of good things for it. You're right. But uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sure you're going to figure this out and hopefully our listeners will figure it out along with us and we will help some of them uh, get past their excuses because that is the show. What's your excuse? And I've enjoyed hanging out with you again. I look forward to doing this again next week. Absolutely. And by the way, guys, um, uh, we would like to thank those who pledged our Patreon page. You are re really helpful to this show, and we are grateful for your help. In case you're wondering, Patreon is a simple way for you to contribute to this show every single month and get super cool exclusive rewards in return, including a 30-minute coaching se session with Max Ivy himself, the myth, the legend. Anyway, I promise you will love the perks. Our Patreon is at frederickby.com, frederick with a C, by like bye -bye .com, and click Patreon in the header. The money is used to cover our production costs and editing time. You can contribute for as low as one dollar, one dollar a month. Come on, guys, you can do this. <laughs> and also, we have the Creative Magic Store, uh, mugs, t-shirts, uh, bags, jewelry, so much stuff. So, and by the way, you have Max's books on the, in there, too. And uh, this podcast is FRWE free every time you download it on iTunes or Stitcher. So please go over there, subscribe, subscribe. It is listener supported. Tell a friend, leave a five star review, a five star, not a four star, a five star review. It really helps a brother out. And Max, you have two books, right? Yeah, but I don't want to mention the books today. I want to okay, mention cool. something that we're going to be that I want that I want to add to the store, and I think people will get a, will get a lot of benefit out of it. Um, I want to add my uh, online audio course that teaches people how they can use podcasts and radio shows to share their story, reach a wider audience, build their brand, sell their products and services. Awesome. And I'm looking forward to adding that to the online store because I think in addition to the books is something that will really help people who know they need to market and promote but are wondering how. And It's got a lot of great stuff in there about the how. Well, oh, awesome, awesome. Yes, that's uh, that's going to be added. Awesome people. Uh, last words, Max. Want to say bye to everybody? Or 
Yeah, I hope everybody is. Uh, I, I hope to hear to start hearing from some of y'all people as far as some of the excuses that you've done something about. I want to. People ask me, Max, does it bother you being told you're an inspiration? I go, no, it doesn't bother me. But I like to hear what I inspired people to do. Yeah, uh, that's true. And don't forget, live with purpose, passion, and love. Bye bye.